Welcome everybody to this webinar on Mahara 2004 and the new features that we recently implemented. I'm happy to see everybody here tonight from several parts of the world and um, we'll be taking you through some of the highlights of Mahara 2004 which we re just released last week on Wednesday the 29th of April and um, therefore actually already week before and um, therefore want to show you just a little bit give you a little bit of an insight into what all of these new features are about so that you have a clearer picture of whether you want to explore them um, or whether you'd like to look further into them or immediately try to get upgraded to take advantage of um, all of these new features. But before we jump into the new features, um, I'd very much like to thank everybody who had participated in this release. And that is not just the development team, um, but it is also um, other community members, be that translators, graphic designers, system administrators, business analysts, business analysts and UX designers, front-end designers, support people, people organizing events, um, for example, like um, Makara or Maxi or Kiwi Mac here in New Zealand, as well as testers, code for viewers, and those um, letting us know about new features they'd like to see and also bugs that we should be fixing. Because a release is not just about the code, it is very much about the people working with the software, using it on a daily basis, because all of you have that insight on what works really well in Mahara and what doesn't work so well. And um, of doesn't work so well, I'm just realizing that I haven't shared my screen with you yet. So I better do that, because otherwise you're not seeing anything. Um, yeah, there is a possibility to make the screen sharing um, screen full screen um, if you want to see things more clearly. Okay, so here we've got our Mahara community with all the people that um, have been part of this release. And um, besides everybody who more actively contributes to Mahara through the various roles, um, there is also the possibility to support the project and individual features through funding. So also a big shout out to any of the sponsors and all of the sponsors that have contributed to Mahara 2004. And some like to stay a bit more on the hidden side than others. And so in this uh, webinar, I'm not going to mention names um, so that it's kind of fair across the board. But if you have very specific questions around um, particular features, then I'm happy to share more details about them. So let's jump into the first new features. Um, there is the language toggle. So one aspect of Mahara is that you can um, have it translated into many different languages. And so our translators form a very important part of our community. And in the past, you could change the language either directly on the homepage when you logged in or by going into the preferences and scrolling quite far down on the page and then changing the language. However, that is quite cumbersome and especially if you work in a bilingual context or an administrator decided to um, set one language, but you'd prefer another one that is installed on your site. Um, that was quite a long ways to go. And so we were fortunate to have the language toggle implemented in Mahara so that we can very easily switch from one language to another without leaving the page. And just really learn about all the different languages, what they are saying, and um, just switch between them. What this language toggle doesn't do is translate your content. 
So any of the things that you put into Mahara is still only displayed in the language in which you put it in. At some point, it would certainly be fantastic to be able to translate things on the fly or have translations available, but that was not um, the feature that we had implemented in this case, but it was changing the interface language more easily. So in this first round of features that I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to focus on features that improve the usability of Mahara. And then in the second part, we have features that work more for larger organizations um, in regard to single sign-on. So continuing with our usability features, um, if we are again on a larger Mahara instance, like some of you here in the room are, and you might even sh uh, and you shared with other organizations, and then it can be quite difficult to actually find the people with whom you want to share your portfolio because there are just too many of them. So it could very well be that you have um, six John Smiths um, that are on the site or Peter Muller's uh, depending on the country. And so what we were able to implement in Mahara 2004 was that you see the people of your own institution first before you see people from other institutions. And that really helps also when you narrow the search down, works the same if there were two polys, then one is shown for people in school and another one then for all the other organizations. And that helps to um, see just the people that you are most likely to interact with and want to give them access to your portfolio. A third important feature is the personal group labels. So many of you here in the webinar have been using Mahara for many, many years. And so most likely you've been creating groups left, right and center and have been working with them extensively over multiple semesters. Um, and you might even be an administrator only in certain groups and then a learner in others and therefore really have a very long list of groups. And now it is actually possible to manage that process more easily and manage your groups better because you can label your groups. And the labeling really works on a personal level. And um, so these are your labels. Um, they are kind of tags or keywords, but we couldn't use the word tag because that was already used in Mahara for other purposes. So that's why it is uh, personal group labels. And so what you can do is label any group that you are a member of and give it one or multiple labels and the search within the labels function is exactly like the tag search so that if there is already a label that you have given earlier then it is being suggested to you and now that you've given labels you can filter your list of groups to just the groups that have this filter attached and this label attached therefore making it shorter now if you go away to the dashboard and you come back to the group, then that filter will still be there. So it's one of our sticky filters because the organization that had it implemented said, well, you need it for the entire semester so that you see, well, these are all my groups for the summer semester or all the groups for the winter semester if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. And um, therefore the filter needs to be sticky. It needs to stick around no matter whether you go away from the page or stay on it until you change it again. So that's the first place where you can use that sticky filter. The second place is here in the sidebar, um, which you control via your settings, where you again see um, filters displayed. In this case, I already had an archive filter applied um, but I can also say I want to see all the groups labeled course. Safe. And then I only see the groups that 
are in regards to cores. And in this case, it is actually three of them. And so those labels work on any sort of account. Doesn't have to be an admin account, can be a teacher or staff account, and then a regular um, student account. And it also works on the profile page. So on the profile page, you have the My Groups block that you can put there. And you can do the exact same filtering there by deciding which labels you'd like to see in it. And the labels can be different. So you can display a different set of uh, groups on your profile page than you display in your sidebar, then you display um, automatically when you go to the groups um, via the main menu. Those were kind of a lot of the usability improvements. Um, one other improvement that we have made um, is for, just need to find the correct window, is for the export of portfolios. We, uh, in the past, we always recommended people to export their portfolio in HTML and in Leap2A in order to be very flexible, to be able to put it back into another Mahara instance or another inst um, portfolio software that supports the Leap2A format um, or view it outside of Mahara by using HTML. Now, by always having said, well, you need to export both, the question of course comes up, why don't you just export both of them in one? And so thanks to one of our clients, we were able to, uh, no, thanks to one of our developers who did that as her project, um, we were able to do that. And so now there is no more choosing of whether it's HTML export or whether it is leap to a export, they are all done at the same time. Because whenever something is exported, the files need to come along, um, pages need to be created. So we are actually in a sense also saving space because we are not having one zip file for HTML and one for leap to a but everything in one. And if you were to upload such an export into a Mahara instance, Mahara would be looking for that leap to a file. And if it finds it, it'll try to extract it. Otherwise, it'll tell you that it's not possible. So let's generate that export. And it kind of works like it did before. Um, we, uh, we have the um, export possibilities. And it just takes a little while because there's quite a bit to export. It's done, gets into the temp folder. And if I now want to review that under my recent um, changes, then I have everything in my export, the HTML, and then also the leap to a XML file. And in the export info file, that is where all the files live that are part of my portfolio. And in this case, I exported the entire content. And if you looked very closely, you also saw that there's a PDF in there. Because from this version on, it is possible to extract the portfolio entirely in PDF files. And so every portfolio that you have in your account is created as a PDF. So in this case here, I have individual file, um, individual pages. However, it is also possible to export a collection as a single PDF. Then every page within the collection will receive its own PDF, um, will receive its will start on its own page within the larger PDF, um, therefore making it possible for you to also be more independent from the HTML display, um, because sometimes it is really required that PDFs are submitted um, for grading or for, um, store for 
um, long-term storage at organizations. This feature of the PDF export is currently an experimental feature because it's, it's a huge change. And so there are lots of things, lots of moving parts that still need to be investigated to a degree. And also an extra software is necessary to be installed on the server um, for it to actually work. That is a headless Chrome, Chrome browser or Chromium browser. And um, that's why we labeled it as an experimental feature um, so that you can give it a go, can give us feedback on it, um, but might still be a bit careful using it um, because we are also still gathering more insight on what um, is still needed for it. But it is certainly possible to export portfolios now more comfortably than via the print functionality that has been um, available in Mahara for a while. Because with the PDF export, all artifacts are also exported and um, therefore can be retrieved from the export, not making that a flat PDF file, but one where you can um, also have the, the artifacts that cannot be displayed directly on a page available in the export. Those were the majority of the um, features focused on what um, individual learners can see. Um, there are two more left that I'd like to show you before we get uh, delve deeper into the administration features. And one feature is cover images. So here you see a pages and collections overview page with the page titles and our cards. However, it could also look very different. Namely in Mahara 2004, it can look like this, where you can upload cover images for your individual portfolios, be that portfolio pages or portfolio collections, and then have these cover images being displayed directly here on your pages and collections overview page. And so if you wanted to um, add a cover image, you can do that either to a new page or to an existing page directly from the page settings screen under the advanced options where we have a number of other really good features um, as well. And there you have the cover image. And we do recommend that you only upload a small image um, with the dimensions of 180 pixels wide by 130 high, um, so that it works really nicely within the available space. It's a small image that doesn't take up a lot of um, space for people to load and also works well on mobile devices. And so in this case, I can just remove the image and either upload a new image or choose one that I had already uploaded. Select it. And as you can see here, another um, new feature that is available is restricting the file type upload um, so that you can only upload certain file types that an administrator allowed. And if you try to upload any other file, um, then they will be rejected. That way, administrators can also ensure to keep their environments safe and um, not have it um, compromised by potentially dangerous files that would normally also not be allowed to be uploaded to the learning management system, for example. And so now that I've actually chosen a different image, you can see it here for the domain one card. And because some pages do have um, descriptions, that one is being displayed as a rollover um, so that it can still be clearly read. However, it's out of the way when you don't need to see it. Christina, I yep. have a question. Sure, go I'm ahead. I'm loving this, by the way. It looks really, really lovely. Um, what happens with a collection? Does it just choose the image that's on the first page? Nope. Um, you can upload a cover image um, directly to a collection as well. 
So it does not depend on the on the picture that is on the first um, page in the collection, like we like it is currently the case with the URL of the collection, but um, it comes with its very own cover image. So you could even already have images on a page and they will just not be displayed um, and only the cover image from the collection is there. The nice thing also about the cover images is you can add cover images directly on an institution page and then when somebody copies over the template, they already have the cover images um, available to them as well. And now that we have those cover images, of course, we have a lot of possibilities for future enhancements to Mahara, namely, for example, making those tiles available when searching for pages or for displaying portfolios around the site um, so that they do also come with those cover images. Or eventually, like um, University of the Arts London had for a very long time, um, have a public display of images that immediately have a cover image there rather than just having a list of portfolios. So lots of possibilities for additional improvements. So this was a very good first step to kind of sneak in the last minute um, into this very release. Kind of going on to a few more um, administrative things. Um, one that is not dependent on anything single sign on is that it is now possible to set the default group settings as a site administrator. So typically when you create a group, it always looks the same and you have to make all the changes or have to make changes via CSV file or via uh, web services. But now you can set the default group settings directly in the Mahara site administration. Um, and then all new groups will be created with these settings in place, um, which is in particular really, really good if you do want to create a lot of groups in one go and you just want to have certain settings there. Um, or it's a new semester and um, all groups need to be created the same way, then that can be achieved now. So here we've got the request, which was a customization already that I had made before. Typically the open um, group setting is the default. And I also changed the recommendations over to friend invitation. And so that is how you can create groups with particular settings very quickly to have them uniformly set according to your requirements, not what we deem as um, the best way to set up a group. And now we are getting to the single sign on features, um, starting with features that are still useful for people themselves before we getting all the way into the administration. So one thing, when you have single sign on, um, I can show you that very quickly on another Mahara page, is that typically you always had the login box there, username and password, and then very small, the single sign on button. Um, but sometimes that was actually the more important button for students to press, especially when there was an instance that um, only allowed single sign on login um, for every regular learner and teacher. Um, and only the administrators could log in via um, the normal internal Mahara authentication. Now we are turning that around. So as soon as you have single sign on activated, the login box changes and makes the SAMA login the prominent authentication method and then hides the what we call administration login um, in that drop down. If you have a multi tenanted Mahara site where some people can log in via SAML and others can log in via normal Mahara, then of course this language string can also be changed um, to not allude to just administrators. Um, but the important thing is that really the buttons are more prominent. And if you have more than one SAML authentication method installed on the site, 
then the uh, um, name of the institution can be placed on here or any um, abbreviation that you would like to use via a custom language string. So to be able to really distinguish between the different authentication methods for people to find them easily. If there are more than two SAML authentication methods, then there, um, it will, then there will only be one button that takes you to a page where they can select which one they want to go with. Now, once I'm logged into that site, um, I decide to leave my current organization and move to a different one. And it is now possible to move your own account from, a, from an institution in Mahara to another institution in the same Mahara instance as long as it had works with um, SAML authentication. Um, that is required to allow for the proper authentication mechanism. And in the past, any organization move typically required the intervention from an administrator um, because they either needed to approve the request or they invited people to join the organization. However, with SAML, we know that um, because somebody is in the directory of an organization for authentication purposes, they are allowed in that organization. So it should be easier um, to make it possible for them to also be placed into that organization or to move into that organization more quickly. And so this can be done now by a process um, that sends off an authentication request to the other authentication method um, so that I don't accidentally put in my password into our authentication method I just had logged in before. But you do see that um, an email is dispatched to my email address of my current account so that I can confirm, yes, I do want to move my authentication and my account into the new institution. And that way we'd also want to prevent that somebody's account kind of gets misused. They log in and suddenly portfolios get moved without people's permission. And so if I followed the email link that I have received, then I would be able to move my account automatically without anybody um, doing anything else on the on the site and I'd be up and running or continue to be up and running directly. Additional SAML features um, are also quite quite uh, there. There are quite a few of uh, quite a lot of them in there actually in this instance of Mahara, which helps large organizations manage their um, organization members more easily. And right now it doesn't want to show me because I locked myself out of the account. Um, so I will need to quickly, oops, quickly improvise because I can't actually show that to you on that instance. Um, showing you the user manual instead, um, where all these new features um, have been documented. And um, the because I can't show you the, the entire workflow anyway, um, I'm going to show you the screenshots. And the, the nice thing about the changes that we have made is that they work on any SAML-based um, authentication method. So that can be SAML, that can be um, Azure AD, that can be Shibboleth. As long as there's a SAML bridge, um, these features can be used with the IDP. And so all of these ones here, down from organization on all the way to auto group administration of all groups on the site are new in Mahara 2004. 
um, because they allow us to see an organization, um, which is good, especially if an IDP has multiple organizations uh, combined um, who share one directory to differentiate between them and use that information also to then set up further institutions um, automatically. Some IDPs also store um, profile pictures. So that can also be then directly imported um, into Mahara. And then there can be fields for roles and in certain cases, role prefixes. And we can automatically say um, which role in the authentication directory should become a site administrators. So everybody, for example, with the role admin in the authentication method will also be an administrator in Mahara automatically. Anybody with the particular role staff will have the staff role in Mahara. And then you can do the same with institution administrators and institution staff members. I find that is a huge relief um, because it makes it much easier for large organizations in particular to manage um, their accounts because there's nobody, no admin that needs to go in there anymore and change accounts manually from a regular institution member to a staff member or to an administrator, which can be quite tedious because oftentimes um, people don't log in at the same time and then you need to find them, you need to search for them. And so there's typically um, quite a few clicks involved in order to make somebody or uh, give somebody a different role. And so by using an external authentication method that is SAML based, you have to circumvent all of that. Now here you also see that there's role mapping for auto group administration and um, auto group administration of all groups on the site. So this is a very special feature that we implemented for one of our clients and also wanted to make it available to everyone. Um, because that gives you the possibility to put one person or multiple people automatically in every single group that is created within an, organize, within an organization. So that can be a support role um, typically, or if um, certain or if groups need to be monitored um, for copyright um, infringement things or anything less on the negative side, then that can be used for that as well. Now, because it is also possible from this version on to create organizations automatically based on one IDP, it is also possible to say every single group on the entire site um, will get this particular group administrator added to the group. And these people cannot be removed. Um, and these people are also auto subscribed to every single forum post um, because they have a monitoring functionality or function. Um, they should not be able to unsubscribe because they can manage um, where they are reading messages um, in their Mahara inbox. And that way it can be ensured that um, for example, that support person does not get kicked out of a group accidentally. Now, one other change um, that you will see around the site, which doesn't have anything to do with new functionality or um, enhancements for organizations, um, is that we've made a language change for um, English, which does not have to be taken up by other languages if the term user or the equivalent of the term user is not a problem there. So in Mahara, we really went away from using the term user um, and are saying people instead or group members, account holders, portfolio authors, institution members because the term user in English is just has a very negative connotation a lot of times. And um, that's why we wanted to get rid of it in order to also humanize the, the platform more 
and therefore be also oftentimes more specific of who you are looking for and what somebody does on the site rather than just saying user. So we are also looking into eradicating that term in general in the language that we are using. Um, sometimes it is not entirely possible. Um, so in particular for very technical aspects, um, we, are still, we are still keeping the term. And right now we also haven't gotten rid of username, for example. Um, but in lots and lots of other cases on the site, you will not see the term anymore. And there are a bunch of other new features, um, some on the smaller end or the majority of those on the smaller end. Um, there are additional notifications for peer assessors, um, more information available when sign off and verifications have been done so that you actually see when a page was signed off and when it was verified and so on. And of course, we've also fixed a number of issues that had come up over time that have been reported to us. You can see all of these changes are documented in the Mahara manual as usual. And if you go there and search for the index entry new in Mahara 2004, you will find them more quickly. And if you are not supported by a company that offers Mahara support services, then you can of course also download and install Mahara to your own heart's content on your own server and um, upgrade your own site, or if you're new to it, um, install the new version. Now, with the release of Mahara 2004, um, we are finishing the support for Mahara 18.10. So none of these sites or none of the Mahara 18.10 versions are supported anymore. The last uh, minor point update was made on the 30th of April. And therefore we encourage people to upgrade to a newer version. And in general, I think it's a good idea because you get all those new features. However, if somebody does want to stay on an older version, and in this case, the earliest would be Mahara 18.10, we do now have a premium service available. Um, that is the extended security support, which makes it possible to extend the lifetime of one version of Mahara for an additional two years. So Mahara 18.10 has had its year and a half of uh, support, but with that extended security support, um, we would still be making um, security updates for that version until April 2022, if there is somebody who would like to subscribe to that service. Similarly, for Mahara 1904, with whose support is finishing up in October this year, um, the support can be extended until October 2022, um, which effectively gives it an entire lifetime of three and a half years of being supported. And that support means um, security updates that are made known to us for other versions of Mahara um, that can then also be, be backported to it. So if you do need to stay on uh, Mahara 18.10, um, either for a short while longer or for a longer while, then there is still the possibility to stay supported and be supported with security updates. Otherwise, um, I definitely recommend you upgrade to one of the longer supported versions. And of course, my preference would be Mahara 2004 because that has just come out and therefore is um, supported until October of next year. Um, and therefore is a good option to upgrade directly in order to also take advantage of all the new features that we have released. And so that brings me to the end of my presentation of the new features. And I'd like to hand the microphone over to you now, 
to anybody who wants to grab it or also in the chat itself and ask questions for it, comment on it or um, just let me know what you think of the new features and which one is your favorite so far. And yes, Sam, I'm reading your, your comment on the, uh, um, on the PDF export. Uh, yes, that would certainly be a good opportunity to make sure that portfolios can be kept on a very individual basis, but then also submitted uh, to the apprenticeship um, organizations that do need to store the records. And um, to my knowledge at the moment also needed more in a PDF format. Just a quick comment, because I, I realise mm -hmm. nobody's actually talking. Um, I really like the way that you talked about how you're trying to humanise um, Mahara. So things like giving people, like, you know, calling them people rather than users and account holders and members. I really like that. And also you know, the cover images for the portfolios, it just mm. looks nice, visual, and, you know, I love stuff like that and how people are able to choose their language without actually having to dig through the settings. I just feel it's like a nice, it seems like a really nice release. Thanks, so. I remember when 18, yeah, I think it was 1810 when that came out, I got all excited. Is that, was that the one where they had the um, timeline and the pushing um, groups, uh, pushing templates to group users? Yes, I, I think that, really, that was 1810, I think, yeah. Yeah, I, I got really excited mm. by that release. And I'm feeling just as excited about this one, so um, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm kind of excited by every single release because there's always something in there that, that we've been either waiting for for a long time um, Lillian mentioned, oh no, sorry, Lo Louise mentioned the cover images there. That's been kind of on our radar as wishlist item for since we pretty much implemented um, the functionality. And now thanks to funding from a US organization, it um, has been made possible, possible so that we can finally have that. And yes, Gordon, the, the single zip um, export does simplify things. And um, that is also one of the things that we do want to do with Mahara more and more and really look at new features that we are implementing. Um, do we actually need a setting or can we do something without a setting? Can we, or can we simplify um, certain processes that we currently have, like the export, um, into something that is more streamlined, therefore has uh, way less um, support required for it. Hi, Christina, it's Ingrid. Sorry, Hi, Ingrid. Hello. Um, I think it's everything's really good. I can't wait for it to be really, well for for us to get it. So mm -hmm. I'm really excited by all of the features that you showed here today, particularly the cover the cover images. I think that'll just give the students such a great. Um, emphasis that this is really important mm. and they can make their own and just show it off because it does need to showcase them. And I love the fact about the PDF that um, they can actually bring it down as well, which would be really handy for those that don't quite do things correctly as I'm finding at the moment. So it's great. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ingrid. And yes, I do look forward to, to hearing your feed, uh, the feedback from you and your colleagues and then your students uh, once uh, your site has been upgraded. Um, because they are certainly also with 19.10, a lot of improvements made around the layout and editing and um, simplifying processes there. Mm -hmm. I really like the sticky feature of the search. That's a nice implementation. Um, did you think about making it more REST-like so you can use the search again? Or, or why, why is it just... Uh, if you return to it, it's sticky, but it's not really in the URL. It's not really fixed in the URL. Right. Um, that was a decision by the development team. And so, Pascal, I'm afraid I can't give you an answer why it hasn't made it in the URL and is only a filter there. Okay. Because it's a nice feature because it uh, it's it's often that you return to 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 your page and you want that that it's the same as it was before. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool way to do it. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we do um, tend to make a number of our features sticky these days um, be because 
to, uh, to make the workflows easier for people, especially when they need to come back to a page um, frequently. Um, another example where you can see that feature um, that uh, is the details mode on the page, um, which we introduced in Mahada 1910, so last October, um, where you can see all the details. And if you go back to the page, then you still have the details mode on, which, will, which helps with um, the assessment of portfolios. So that a staff member could keep that mode on throughout the entire review of a portfolio, yet a student could just take a look at the portfolio and view it like it were a regular web page without seeing all the details, which also takes away from Mahara being so blocky. But I'll, um, I'm just making a note of the sticky filter uh, Pascal because that is certainly something that I'd like to check with the development team in order to see if there's something that we could do in the future when implementing some of those features that um, they are then also more usable for people who want to bookmark things. Great, thanks. Thanks for your suggestion. Any other questions or comments? Hi, Christina. Uh, just more of a comment there. Um, you, you've mentioned that you get really excited with every release, and I have to say I feel the same because one of the big selling points for me, but Mahara and always tell people, is that unlike many other bits of software, it's so responsive to the community. Um, so there's always a new feature coming out that people actually want. Mm -hmm. um, so I just have to say well done and we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Gordon. I'm giving that back uh, to all the people who have contributed these new features. Um, and some people here, or at least one is in one of those organizations that has sponsored a feature, um, very big one. And so it's always good to see community members come together and either pick something new that um, we hadn't thought of, which is most of the time the case, um, but at other times also um, have a feature that we have been waiting for for a long time. And we, I mean, we as a community. And so seeing some of those ideas that had already come up a few years ago percolate and then suddenly it might even be easier to implement now that we have new technologies available and uh, can suddenly make those early dreams happen. And thanks everybody for your um, comments also in the chat and saying that it does look nice. So I do hope that you will all be able to upgrade very soon. Yeah, Gordon, your, your comment around um, that you like the label feature, but would need to think about how to advise tagging for longer term usability. Um, that is definitely a very good question. Um, what we implemented for the labeling feature is that it is a Boolean or rather than an end um, so that you can give individual tags and then combine them and therefore see, um, see groups of, uh, or see filtered, filtered lists of groups rather than needing to give, um, yeah, rather than getting too narrow in your search. So your tags can be extremely specific, um, but they can also be broad depending on um, what you would like to see. Yeah, that, that makes sense because I was thinking in your example of using the filter of semester, uh, that works fine this year, but next year you've also got semester. But if you had individual labels for which year it is as well, yeah. then contextually that makes more sense. Mm. Um, yeah, so make it uh, summer semester 2020 or winter semester 2020. Um, but then also still be able to tag it um, or to label it actually um, English or math or sciences in order to then have those very different combinations possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, thank you.
I also want to say thanks very much for the presentation. It's really useful. Uh, some some really nice features that are coming up. Things like thanks, PDF export look great, and even little things like images on pages in collections. I I can just imagine the uh, the use that people will make of that. It's a little thing, but I think it goes a long way. So thanks very mm. much. Thank um, you. I had a, a question which was really a. Uh, which of the are there any of these features which you intend to go on and develop for 2010? Are there any kind of sort of there's more work to do on this particular feature, even though it's been released now? Mm -hmm. There's more work to do because that's inevitably a question that we'll that we'll get internally. Yeah, um, the PDF export is definitely one of those features where we still need to work on a bit um, mm -hmm. because it is currently an experimental one and. Um, therefore does still need looking into in particular around uh, performance on very large servers um, where there's lots of portfolios, lots of very big portfolios um, going through more of um, testing for that. So if you um, do have, for example, a test server available where you can just run PDF exports and the um, PDF export actually also works on the bulk export page. Um, so all all the exports now work there. That is one of the several features that I hadn't highlighted. Um, then that would certainly be helpful to give us more insight into what you come across. Um, we looked at making it work with all the different block types, but certain block types are easier than others. Um, we do know that there are currently still problems with uh, comments because what the PDF or what the export in general in general always does is um, export only things that are in your own personal portfolio area. Whereas comments have the profile pictures from other people attached to them. And so that is currently still causing a wee bit of a problem. Uh, so there are certain areas that we will need to continue working on and um, to make it more robust for organizations. Um, it is definitely right now already possible to export portfolios as they are and the content comes along um, just in a day-to-day -day operation that might still need a bit, um, a bit more testing there. So if anybody can lend a hint, um, that would be much appreciated. Okay, thanks. That's useful to understand. And Gordon, you are perfectly right. Um, it would be great to see the cover images page display for groups you are a member of. Um, that is certainly a very good idea, which the client also already had. Um, but due to the timeline um, that we had to implement the functionality, um, we focused on the cover images for the pages and collection page first and not on any of the group um, displays. But that is certainly one of those areas where it would also be really nice to start using cover images so that you can assign a cover image to a group homepage and um, have a more visual overview for those. Yes, please do always watch the space because we have two releases per year, one in April which we have now, that's why 2004 for 2020 and April. And the other one then comes duly in October and will be 20.10. Thanks, Sam. Kind of usually we, we have these uh, sessions in person in New Zealand, but now COVID kind of forced me to um, definitely also offer them as webinars and so far thank you so much for coming to them and um, making it worthwhile having offered them and so I think that'll definitely be something um, that I'll put onto our regular schedule when we have the new releases rather than just offering them face to face which is definitely nice to have because you can just chat with people differently. Um, however, that is not possible to do with everybody. So I'm happy to offer them again for the next release. Also making it easier, of course, for people within New Zealand who are not in one of our three big centers to attend them. 
And um, if you do have any colleagues that weren't able to come to one of the two sessions today, please let them know we'll have a few more sessions for the rest of the month that again cater to different time zones. And um, for those amongst us here who speak German, there is a special German session or German speaking session. Um, I'll try to keep my um, English accent there a little bit down that I'm seeming to develop um, when I'm not speaking German too much. Um, that, and that session will be held next Tuesday on the 19th at uh, 10 o'clock um, European time. So not New Zealand time, 10 o'clock in the morning for, for those in Europe, mainland Europe, Switzerland, Austria, Germany. And um, there's a separate link for that, um, which is linked off the main event page that you have seen so that people don't get confused with the different time zones there. Yeah, so in, in regard, uh, Ingrid, to the quick how to use some of the new features, um, that will be something to, to think about uh, whether we can make that happen. Um, I'm definitely happy to stick around for, for a little while if you'd like to look at a particular one um, or we can see if we can schedule something at some other time. Or maybe somebody else from the community would uh, like to hold them. It doesn't have to be me all the time can be many others. Sam, do you actually have a little bit of a how to do something Mahada clinic scheduled for the Mahada Hui UK Ireland event on the 15th of July, for which I'm kind of making a quiet plug now? <laughs> um. I don't think we've actually got around to scheduling anything in or you know, discussing what's going to go in the program yet other than making sure that we had you to open up the, the day. <laughs> um, I know we're definitely going to have a workshop where we're going to ask um, practitioners to put their heads together and put together a wish list of features and to wireframe how they could look and work. Mm -hmm. um, there's also going to be a developer workshop so those that are more technically minded can get together and talk to one of our senior developers about how to go about customising Mahara. Um, oh, thank you Christine. Um, I mean, um, I've asked people to indicate if they'd like to do a presentation of what they're doing. Um, so far, not many people have offered themselves. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start poking people to see if we can yeah. show them specific things about their sites. Well, you've got a good crowd in here today to ask. Yeah, please come along. I mean, I, mean, I know it's um, UK and Ireland, but it's online, it's free. And if you want to join in and if you want to share what you're doing, then please do. Love it. Yeah, so Ingrid, the, the timing, of course, is not ideal for us because it'll definitely start um, for you, I think, in, um, well, mid-evening. Um, think no actually uh, five o'clock in your case I think um, over in Australia because it would be starting around seven or eight um, for me and um, so certainly a couple of hours potentially I hope it'll also be recorded um, but you can definitely also get in touch with Christine Nichols um, who is still leading the um, Mahara Oz or Mac Oz group the Mahara user group um, Australia and see if she'd like to organize something. And thanks him for confirming that it will be recorded. Okay, so we've come to the official end of today's session. Um, thank you again for having come along and participated in this webinar. Um, I was really happy to be able to show you the, the highlights of Mahara 2004 and hopefully have given you a good appetite for upgrading, um, depending on your schedule, of course, maybe sooner rather than later. Um, or for those in the Southern Hemisphere, some of them might be waiting for 2010 rather than making the switch um, in the middle of the academic year. But whichever way you go, there's certainly something for everybody in there. And I look forward to hearing from you how you're making use of these features, uh, what works particularly well, 
um, what might be good to tweak or to change and um, then help make Mahara better. And so I'm stopping the recording. Um, however, 